It's safe to say that Series 12's Fugitive of the Jadoon brought the most unexpected amount of baggage onto the Doctor Who fandom. Spoilers ahead, by the way. Ruth here broke a fire alarm in a lighthouse, absorbed lots of timey-wimey glowy stuff, and became also the Doctor. Viewers such as myself were left completely dumbfounded, and since the episode aired about nearly two weeks ago as time of recording, we've been trailing red string all over the dang planet trying to work out what the hell just happened. We knew something was coming in Fugitive of the Jadoon, as the BBC would not shut up about it in the week leading up to its release on social media. I thought it would be Captain Jack, and I was half right, but that wasn't really what they were on about. Joe Martin's Doctor, or Ruth, has been coined the Fugitive Doctor, seeing as, as she's in hiding from Gallifrey, and also because that's what the title was called. But that's not really the Doctor we know. We've only got a couple of episodes left of Series 12 as of the time of recording. We've got Can You Hear Me coming out this Sunday. It's a Friday right now, hello. So we're hoping we find out exactly what this Fugitive Doctor's deal is. However, there is a theory about how she is in fact the protector of this timeless child, and the Doctor's memory was then wiped to keep this horrific secret. So horrific was it, the Master trashed Gallifrey. This should be fun. I'm Rich, your go-to for Doctor Who from WhatCulture.com, and this is how Joe Martin's Doctor was the protector of the timeless child. First up, the Fugitive Doctor is between the second and third Doctors. Basically, the biggest question on everyone's lips is where does this Doctor fit into the timeline of the show? Pre-Hartnell was the most frequent suggestion, but since the Fugitive's TARDIS is also a police box, it must be after Hartnell, since it was his TARDIS that got stuck as a police box in the first place. Instead, it's rumoured we're looking back to Season 6 of Doctor Who from 1969, in between Doctor 2 and Doctor 3. Patrick Troughton regenerating into John Pertwee was never explicitly seen, but heavily implied and reinforced by the 12 regenerations per Time Lord fact. The first thing fans jump to to debunk this theory is the fact the Fugitive Doctor didn't recognise the sonic screwdriver as wielded by Doctor 13. Its appearance has changed many times throughout the course of the series, but it's always been recognised as a sonic screwdriver. Furthermore, it was introduced in 1968's Fury of the Deep, featuring the second Doctor. So how does the Doctor supposedly, after the second Doctor, not recognize a sonic screwdriver they've used before. Well, maybe she does recognize it, but doesn't want to acknowledge it. She looks upon it with almost disdain, saying she's smart enough to not need one. The Doctor has been abrasive in the past. I mean, look at Colin Baker's Doctor sort of overall, and even worse, William Hartnell's first Doctor in the pilot episode. He is a dick. And Ruth's Doctor seems to align with that abrasive approach of the character. Similarly, she tricked Gat into killing herself and even armed herself in the first place was way past the Doctor's usual moral code. What if being used by the Time Lords to do their bidding has regressed the Fugitive Doctor into an almost War Doctor-like state? She's not doing things in the name of the Doctor, though she still calls herself it. It's being enforced on her by her own race rather than her doing it of her own volition. Of course, that would drive someone away from who they once were. During the events of Fugitive of the Jadoon, she uses the Chameleon Arch to hide away from Gallifrey, removing every scrap of the Doctor she once was, including burying the TARDIS and ditching the Sonic. The other big thing that goes against this whole between two and three theory is the fact that Time Lords have 12 regenerations, which perfectly fits to what we know between Hartnell and Matt Smith. That includes the War Doctor and the Metacrisis Doctors. That's 12 regenerations, 13 Doctors. We know that Time Lords can be granted more regenerations. It's the only way the show continued after Matt Smith. But what if they were able to grant single regenerations too? This would mean shoehorning a Doctor into the established timeline would be possible. Chibnall is a huge fan of John Pertwee's Third Doctor, so maybe he wants his finger in that past pie. When Doctor 3 collapses out of the TARDIS in the opening of Spearhead from Space, what if it's not from regeneration itself, but because of the trauma he was put through as the fugitive, if he even remembers it? Does this mean Sean Pertwee might finally cameo as his father's Doctor in a regeneration scene? As much as I don't want the timeline fiddling with too much, this would be cool. Next, the secret of the Timeless Child. We don't know much about the Timeless Child as of yet. It's been name dropped twice, and that's about it. We're not here to speculate as to what or who it is, but as a baseline, let's say it's a being in the form of a child with the ability to manipulate time itself. Early in the Gallifrey days, Omega or Rassilon, say, discovered the entity and its power and sought to exploit it. Apparently, Time Lord Society was built on this 
lie. Maybe the timeless child is the sole reason why time travel is possible. What if this kid is wired into the system on Gallifrey like the controller in Bad Wolf slash Parting of the Ways, and they're being milked dry for their power? They're the space whale keeping Gallifrey afloat. You know, the beast below? Series 5? Cool. This is something they will of course want to keep a secret, but the master found out somehow, and even his inconcise moral compass said that was bad. So how did they keep it a secret up to this point? Answer, the Celestial Time Agency, which is basically the CIA of Gallifrey. They were in on the whole deal with who was running it, who I'm guessing was the person to send Gat to get the Jadoom, more on that in a minute, and were tasked with keeping it a secret, even from the president of Gallifrey. It seems to be that if you are recruited as a guard or protector of the child, you are obviously sworn to secrecy and are forced to regenerate and or have your mind wiped in order to cover up your doings. You get called up at random maybe, like jury duty. This is perhaps what happened to the doctor and maybe even the master, hence why he went all genocide on his own race. Could this be why the Doctor ran? At least the Fugitive Doctor. Does the Fugitive Doctor still know of the Timeless Child, or does she even not fully know why she was in hiding? So, the theory. If this Doctor is in between Troughton and Pertwee, let's look at things a little more in context. The second Doctor's run ended with the War Games, where he was forced to regenerate and forced into exile on Earth. This would have been the perfect opportunity for the Galley CIA to swoop in and add a regeneration in between, unknown to the future Doctor. Troughton regenerates into Joe Martin's Doctor and is set to guard the Timeless Child. Since this whole child thing is wrong, somehow, the Fugitive Doctor ditches the screwdriver, arms herself with a blaster, and deliberately distances herself from herself. Working under Commander Gat, she eventually forms a plan to escape, maybe wanting to take this child with her, but even then, she knows her race would supposedly fall if the child is taken from Gallifrey, so she leaves the child alone, only with Lee as her protector. Fleeing to Earth, Gat, needing to protect the secret, puts almost a bounty on the Doctor's head, hiring the Jadoon platoon who were once on the moon to assist. The events of Fugitive of the Jadoon play out, and that's as far as we've got. As a result of all of this, the 13th Doctor proceeds to try and discover what happened in her past, and what this timeless child really is. This is something that will hopefully play out for the rest of the series, so what do we think will happen? We know something's coming because the episode titles of the last two episodes, more specifically the last one, is The Timeless Children. Plural. The Doctor will oppose the Time Lords completely. The Doctor fled from Gallifrey thousands of years prior to Doctor 13. The Time Lords were scarred by the Time War, becoming a race near feared by the rest of the universe, even being compared to the Daleks. Rassilon, insane with power and being someone literally too angry to die, tried to return Gallifrey to the universe almost at the expense of the Master and the human race. The Doctor and the Time Lords aren't exactly cushy bezies, and these events will surely tip them over the edge. This series will most likely see Joe Martin's Doctor leave us, please, Sean Pertwee, cameo as your dad's Doctor, leaving Jodie to pick up the pieces. These pieces are almost chunks of fuel for the Doctor's character and motivation, something she has really needed thus far. The Doctor has been shunned and used by her race countless times before. What's that? You're wanting to go on a nice holiday with your companions? No. We'll drag you to Scarrow against your will and demand you commit genocide. Genesis of the Daleks, in case you didn't know. We granted you a new set of regenerations, and we are very thankful you saved us from the Time War, but we also locked you in your own confession dial for like a billion years and killed Clara. Wait, that last one might not be too bad. Despite the Master's act of genocide, the Time Lords are surely still out there, and once they're back within shouting distance of the Doctor, they're gonna know about it. The Doctor may completely denounce her own lineage, her own people. It's kind of not the first time. Back into the Time War, Rassilon. Back into hell. She will absolutely disagree what the Master did to Gallifrey, but I'm sure she'll semi-understand why. She just wouldn't go about it that way. What if she's then seen by the remainder of Time Lord society as a fugitive again, or like a vigilante? What if the Time Lords become outright antagonists in the series' future like they have been for brief stints before? Either way, Jodie's Doctor is about to have some serious things to deal with, potentially making her Doctor much, much darker, something Chibnall might have wanted to do all along. So that is our theory on where Joe Martin's Fugitive Doctor fits into all of this. I must admit, I was very skeptical of how this whole thing would play out, but this theory is actually pretty solid. 
I just don't want the ability to insert regenerations as and where convenient to become a thing. But let me know down in the comments what you think of this theory. And if you've got another theory or something you'd like to change on this one, this is again all up in the air, please let me know in the comments below. I, as always, have been Rich. You can follow me on Twitter at PickupChangeToe for more Doctor Who and video game nonsense. Take care of yourselves and I will see you soon.